could never copy Hector Calma. He's just too smart. Every point guard of my generation all wanted to be Hector Calma. We just we weren't smart enough to do what Hector Calma did. Well, the the amazing thing about Hector was he was a quiet guy, but everybody on the team respected him. When he said something, you listened. When he told you to do something, you did it. He had the respect of everybody on the team. And number two was, I was always amazed at the fact that he could stand maybe one foot from you and dribble the ball right in front of you. And you never see anybody go for it. it. That's an amazing thing. A lot of players don't have that where they can just, LA has it. He can dribble right in front of you. And despite the fact that you're right there defensively, it doesn't change his look. It does, he doesn't change his head. He's still got focus on what he's doing. Hector was great at that. I mean, he was great at maneuvering that ball into areas where he wanted to go. Uh, Hector just, was one of the, go ahead. I was just going to say Hector's one of the most quiet persons I've ever met. I, I know him well because our wives are good friends. And so I know mm -hmm. Hector. I've known him now as in our 40s and 50s than I did when he was a player. And he is still incredibly quiet. And uh, his son and my son, our uh, best friends. But Coach Norman, who else from that 1989 team would dominate in today's game? Ricky Brown. Oh, yeah. He would have been unstoppable. Oh, yeah. Be unstoppable today. I'd love to see him going up against Stanley Pringle. That'd be a great matchup. You know? <laughs> Win that I matchup. I forgot Ricky Brown was on that team. That's right. He was on that team. Yeah, Ricky Brown. Uh, I won a couple of championships with them as a player. And, oh, he's tough. He's tough. He played the shooting guard position because, of course, we had Hector Kama, we had Franz Pumarin. Uh, you don't forget we had Otto Augustine, Sam Boyle, Melma Reyes. We had we had some talent out there, but no talent. Uh, that was such a weak team. <laughs> yeah. Asked <laughs> uh, the basketball. He was a good assist guy. He could defend. He had one of those barrel chests where he had a big body, and you know he could stop you in your in your tracks if you tried to overpower him. Um, and he could score the ball. I mean, he could flat out score. He's a great three point shooter, could get into the lane. Um, hey, Ricky Brown could play today and have no problems. I'm sure he could do the oh, same no. thing he did then, he could do today. Uh, Coach Norman, yeah. what about let, let's, let's fast forward to uh, Coach Tim's second Grand Slam team, yeah, Sadmi Coffey, B Meg. From that group of players, who, I mean, who really impressed you? Who was your favorite? Maybe someone that you would have wanted to coach yourself. On the? On, on the San Coffee team of Coach Tim. Who are your players? You coach so many. James, PJ, Mark Baroka, Pingris, um, Joe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we had, we had a quite a team. Rafi Rivas. You, did you ever? No, you never coached Rafi. Did you coach Rafi? No, I did no. not. No. Great, who was, great guy to have on his who team. Was the first name you named? James Yap. James Yap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we all know James Yap right now. He may not be what he used to be, but I remember him when he was a superstar. I mean, he was pretty much unstoppable. Um, he was almost like a JoJo Lastimosa. Just give him the basketball and get out of the way and let him go. Don't try to hinder his talent as much as possible. And whew, he was a handful. James Yap, even in college, when he played for UE, was a hands full. I mean, you just couldn't stop the kid. And of course, I'm a, I'm a great, big Mark Pingris lover, you know? I mean, not just on the court, I'm talking about off the court. I knew him before he joined the PBA. And I remember he was actually staying in the, um, the quarters at Rizal Memorial before he actually joined the PBA, a year before. Now I used to do some clinics for Burlington down there and, and he was actually living there and he would come out and help and I got to respect Mark so much when I was with the national team because he is the type of player that ap applies the glue to your team. He's going to do the little things. You know, I always try to tell players, be what you are, do what you can. Try to stay away from what you can't do. And that doesn't mean you don't want to try to improve the things you're not good at. But at the same time, once you get on the court, you don't want to be out there experimenting while the game's going on. Mark Pingris would stay within that 10, 12 foot range and he was deadly from there. You never saw him say, oh, I think I'm gonna go out and shoot a three right now. He was a disciplined guy who could defend. He was a great team player. And he's one of my favorites actually, all yeah. time in the PB. 
Wow. You know, Coach Norman mentioned uh, that, you know, he used to uh, host a halftime segment. That was my favorite basketball show of all time. The be- I'm, I'm not going to mention the brand again, but yeah, the, the halftime uh, yeah. basketball tips. Coach Tim, do you remember watching that? Coach Norman's sure. halftime show? Sure. I even did a couple of tips myself, but uh, I was always embarrassed because I, I was compared to Norman. And Norman was really good at it, and I was terrible at it. But, uh, you know, that's one of the things I've always envied about Norman is his voice and his way of speaking and the way he, compo- he comports himself. I mean, uh, I've always been very envious of that, Norman. You, you speak extremely well. And not only on camera, but off camera, the players and, and, the, and the like. When you look at my partner, I did a, a lot of games with Miko <laughs> during the PBA. A yeah. lot. Maybe a too lot. many. I, I mentioned Norman's age uh, on TV many, many, many times. I'm only a month behind, so I'm upset too. You keep reminding <laughs> me. Huh? Every time yeah, it's you're close to remember, you always remind me, me oh, oh, you're old already, huh? I'm like, yeah, oh, you're, you're the old man. I'm the youngin' by one month. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You know what? When, when people, when you talk about basketball, you guys sound like, you still have that same appetite, that same zest, yung gana, right? To, you know, to be good at this. Uh, uh, what else do you want to learn about the game? I know the two of you are, are, are like students of the game for life. So, Coach Norman, what else do you want to learn about this game that you love? I just want to keep learning. I remember when... Um, uh, I was listening to a lot of um, coaches talk about the old days, right? And then they started talking about analytics. And they would talk about, no, no, I'd rather just use my instinct, you know, my basketball experience, the things I've done over the years, it it served me better than me worrying about a lot of analytics. I don't disagree with that. I think your instinct and your experience is something that you have that you should utilize in your coaching. But at the same time, I'm not going to let anybody get ahead of me who is using analytics. I'm going to use the analytics also and cup that with my experience over the years so that I can become a better coach. I'm always trying to get out. I'm very similar to Tim. You know, like I told you, we always see each other or find each other when we're overseas. But I like to attend basketball camps. I like to listen to coaches. I've probably listened to every major college basketball coach in the United States over my career. I mean, all of them from Bobby Knight on down. I probably Bobby Higgins, all of them. I've probably heard all of them because I've attended the Nike clinic so many times over the years, just so I can sit there and listen to them to see whether I can learn something new. And I understand the fundamentals of basketball don't change. They're pretty much the same, but you can always learn new terminology. You can always learn a new play, a new out of bounds play that may help you a new drill. Remember both Tim and I have been coaching a long time. We have to keep evolving also. We can't stay like we were back in the 1990s. I mean, we, we have to move with the times. And in that sense, you can always learn from others things that you can probably use to help your team. One of the things you have to do in basketball as a coach is you have to make things interesting and exciting for your players throughout the year. You can't run the same drills every single day. I mean, you have to keep them on edge, keep them excited, keep them these are the things you have to do if you want to stay in coaching. Um, I don't know whether Tim totally agrees with me on this, but that's what I look forward to. I look forward to learning, constantly learning from others, um, understanding that, yeah, I'm pretty sound as far as the fundamentals go, but I'm always looking to catch on to something new that can help me win more basketball games. Coach Tim, what do you want to learn? What do you still want to learn from this game that, uh, that you love? Well, I should have been put in prison maybe 30 years ago. I mean, for all the, for, for 30 years, for all the theft I have done over the years, I've stolen a lot from Norman. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a bad guy. I, I steal from everybody. And I, you know, I, I really can't add much to what Norman said. I, I just really, truly, I'm 100% in agreement with him. It's, it's all about learning and, and, uh, and uh, evolving and, uh, uh, especially in our league where we have to coach 11, 12 months out of the year. I think it was, what, a couple of years ago, we coached 13 straight months. 
Um, our season was 13 months. What was it last year? I don't even remember. But uh, you've got to keep it fresh. You've got to keep it new. Um, guys can get bored in a hurry. And, uh, uh, you know, I always think of the year as one long year, not in three conferences. I want to get better from, you know, from January through the first conference into the second conference and the third conference. It's, that's always been my goal. And maybe that's why we've been successful in the, in the third conferences a lot, because we, we always build to there. Um, and, you know, just now, just over this pandemic, you know, all the stuff that they've been throwing out there on the internet and coaches getting together. And, you know, I've listened, you know, one of the things that have occupied me, I've listened and listened to, uh, I've listened to high school coaches, I've listened to college coaches. Um, and uh, uh, there's some stuff that I say, oh, geez, and they're just figuring that out now. <laughs> we figured that out in the 90s. But there's mm -hmm. other stuff that I'm like, whoa, you know, I, I haven't seen this stuff before. And it's really a matter of sifting through what's going to fit your personality and what doesn't fit your personality. And, and uh, um, but, you know, I, I still find it very, very fun to listen to other coaches. I, I find it very fun to listen to Norman right now. It, it's, it's just really enjoyable. And this was super, super enjoyable for me and I'm sure for all the, the, the basketball fans who continue to learn from the two of you, who continue to be inspired by, uh, by the two of you. Uh, and uh, I, I really hope uh, people take away that, 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 uh, I, that concept, that belief that no matter how good you are, even if you're a Grand Slam coach, that learning never, ever, ever stops. So thank you very much, Coach Norman Black and Coach Tim Cohn, uh, for, uh, for sharing all your stories and all your insights. Thank you, Miko. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Thank you, Norman. And yes, it's been a pleasure, Miko. Always, I, you know, I, I know you. You're my idol in broadcasting, buddy. So I love being on your shows. <laughs>